from Powersonic and Apprentice One to One. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're going to look at some ring vinyl circuit tests and the correlation between some of the dead tests and live tests and other little bits and pieces that might be of interest to apprentices. I asked a question on Instagram the other week about um, some of the stuff people might like to see, and one of them was demonstrating this test. So I thought it was a good one to look at. Before we get on with the video, if you head over to Instagram, this is still available to win. So it's a TIS um, safe isolation kit. And again, any of my videos that you will see me doing, I'm always a big promoter of the GS38 probes and working dead before you become dead. If I don't repeat that at a particular point in the video, I do apologise. I try to remind myself when I have done it to actually mention it. It's really hard when you're recording to, to keep reiterating things that you have done. But I do try and make that point as best I can. Some of the other equipment that are always handy for when you're doing work inside a consumer unit or distribution board. These are great, I've had these for a long time now. Um, fully insulated, get on uh, your conductors without marking them in any way and also you've got that full DD protection right to the end of the tool. And again, for once you've finished with your terminations, this little bad boy for doing the torque up right. And again, none of that's paid or, paid or sponsored, I just like using the gear. Um, I find it useful and helpful. So anyway, we're gonna cut into the video I'll, I'll try and edit together as best I can. This is going to test my skills because I'm trying to use two cameras, as you'll see later on. And um, hopefully the explanation that comes across through the course of the video um, is semi-sensible. Again, I'm not a teacher. These aren't lab conditions, and I'm not um, going to try and pretend I know everything about anything. It's just some observations I've made on the little test rig we've built, and I hope you find it interesting. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. I've just got this distribution board consumer unit open. Uh, it's just connected via a plug top, which is switched on, and there is an RCD in the circuit, so we've got to test this on no trip. I've set up a secondary camera that's looking at the test set, so hopefully this comes out on video okay. See, I've got the GS38 probes again, and um, I'm going to check for ZDB. It's not ZE when you're at a subboard, it's um, a ZDB measurement. And again, apologies for the background noise, but there's quite a bit of building work going on, so we'll have to deal with it. It's not going to stop. Uh, if I go into the loop settings and make sure I'm on no trip, that should be coming out on the, the camera there. And uh, let's make sure we are switched on. So yeah, we're switched on down there. Get the probes in. If I can hold them steady enough. There we go, that's measuring voltage now. I'll hit the test button. And off it goes, doing its magic. And we should get a figure shortly. So I just keep these held on. The test set's just thinking about it. It takes a bit longer on the no trip setting. Mm -hmm. And we're measuring uh, 0 0.21 on LNN and 0 0.62 for line and protective earth. And you can see there that the um, PSC and PFC are different. And the reason for that is the supply circuit over to this distribution board is wired in um, twin and earth so they're not the same size conductors and uh, we've also got a flex cable coming up to here which is adding on to the length of the circuit and then we've got a plug top in the mix as well so it's not an ideal setup it's just been set up like this for demonstration purposes and that's why you're getting the difference in the readings because we know from the video the other day that the figures for ZE at the uh, origin and um, the measurement between line and neutral is roughly speaking the same. So the difference in this is just the supply circuit arrangements over to this point. So we're getting a bit of a difference there just to try and explain that. And now we'll go on and we'll check for uh, prospective fault current. And as we said before in the last video, you need to be connected with any parallel paths for earth. In this particular setup, there aren't really any that's going to affect anything because we've just got the um, earthing CPCs around these uh, little demo uh, circuits we've got set up here but I'll pop it back in and um, we'll take another measurement. Right, so I popped all the uh, CPCs and the earth back into the earth bar there and we're going to take a measurement now for PFC so if I get on the line in neutral and again there's another camera set up on the test set so hopefully I can edit this together properly. We'll see there we've got no voltage between neutral and protective earth and we've got 241 volts between line and neutral and line in earth. Hit the old test button and hopefully they come out largely the same as the last time because as I said these CPCs don't really go anywhere and we're on a timber board so we're not really even into the fabric of the building as such and there you go they are they are roughly the same so we're all good there so that's just a very quick measurement of doing your ZDB and your PFC 
at a sub board. Um, important to distinguish between disconnecting the earth and reconnecting all of the earth for the appropriate tests. So that's that done and we'll now get on to looking at the um, ring final circuit and doing some of the end-to-end -end resistance tests on there. So here we are back split um, off the consumer unit. I've disconnected the two legs of the ring final circuit. You can see them here separated. Let's pop this lighting circuit out the way over there so we know that's nothing to do with it. I've put some ident tags on them just so it's um, doubly easy to make sure we're crossing these over correctly when we get to that stage. And for now, I'll uh, pop the crock leads on. The appropriate test lead. So again, I've got you set up on another camera here if I just start it recording. And there we go. So you can see the test instrument hopefully on the other camera. Uh, let's get these two hooked up correctly. I'm going to have to annoy my OCD in a sec. And use the wrong colour crop clips, I think. Never mind. Right, so I've zeroed the leads off already, so I know that's uh, that's done. And we're just going to do an end-to-end -end measurement to start with on the neutral. So if I pop those on there, hopefully this is coming off okay on camera. And hit test. Again, I'll try and edit this all together. But we've got a reading of 0 0.04 ohms. So 0 0.04 if we do the line conductor in the same way, so just end to end, make sure they're in the crop clip safely, hit the test button again, and we've got 0 0.03. Now they should be largely the same because they're the same size conductors, however you will see that the tails at the consumer unit are slightly longer on the neutral leg than the line, and it could well be the same at the socket fronts as well. So you can always get a small discrepancy, but roughly speaking, they should be the same, but don't be put off if you see slightly different numbers as long as they're largely in the same sort of ballpark you've got nothing to worry about with there uh, let's get on the CPC so I think we're on there let's hit the test on that and there we're measuring 0 0.06 and again roughly speaking you'd expect to be 1.67 times the reading of your um, R1 and RN and the reason for that is the cable diameter is a different size and that's the calculation you use. If they were the same size conductors, again, you'd expect to see the same values. Um, that's largely speaking what we'd expect to see. These numbers, because it's such a short circuit, the numbers are quite small, so I mean, it's, it's difficult to see the total difference between them. But we'll come back to this video later on with some of the calculations and show how that works out. Fingers crossed. Right, moving on to the next stage now. So here you'll see I've set up the crossover test. So I've got um, the line and CPC from different legs of this ring final circuit connected into this Wago and the line and CPC crossed over again. So you've got a CPC on this leg and the line on the other one. And now we've got the plug top in. I've um, zeroed down the leads and hopefully you can see this on the other camera. Uh, where I, I test that, it would help if I started recording. So I'll do that again. So you can see now where uh, that's tested and we've got a measurement of 0 0.04 ohms and again because the lengths are so short it's really difficult to show the maths between this but it'll kind of make true and you shouldn't always expect the maths to be 100% accurate when you're measuring through a socket front for example because they have resistance within them the um, switch contact plates the same you know it's not a not a fine science with these things it's not lab conditions so don't pin yourself to the maths entirely it's just there as a guide to show you the readings you're getting are roughly about the same and again on this next socket down we've got 0 0.04 ohms again and hopefully this one will be largely the same 0 0.04 ohms and that will be what you would expect at every point on a ring final circuit so once you've made your crossover connections here you would expect any socket you go to make that test that the reading would be largely the same Again, there will be some discrepancy based on the condition of the socket front, and as long as it's not uh, a huge discrepancy, it's very rarely an issue. Um, but if you see a, a socket front that's giving you a particularly high reading, you need to think, is it a spare on that circuit, or is there an issue with the terminations or the socket front itself? So that's why we go around and do those I1, R2 tests at every point on the circuit. 
And um, yeah, we've got roughly the same there. I mean, the, the other missing test that sometimes people talk about is where you can then do the neutral as well. So you could cross over between um, your line and your neutral in the same way and then make the test again at each point on the circuit. And again, you would expect them to be largely the same and roughly speaking, a division of four from the end-to-end -end measurements. But we'll go through the maths a little bit later on. I don't want to dwell on that just now because it's it's hard to talk about and explain without some numbers on, on, a, on a board. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. And we've got 0 0.04 ohms for our R1 and R2. Okay, so I've set it back up now to make our ZS measurement on the socket circuit. And again, I am... Um, Going to record it on this other camera so we can show the measurement hopefully as we move through and you'll see there are measuring voltage 242 43 volts between line and protective earth and line and neutral and zero volts between neutral and protective earth and the power is on as you'll see plug top is in and again this video is just focusing on the relationship between resistance measurements and then the um, final alive energized measurement so I'll show you we're here now if I hit the test button. And again with the TIS MFT Pro you have to hold that down for a short while. Um, the cable's been zeroed, test lead sorry. Uh, we should get a reading shortly. Again with the no trip, it takes a bit of time. And we've got 0 0.63 as the ZS on that circuit. And again there'll, there'll be some differences between the, the maths and the actual measurement. You should never really expect to see an exact comparison it's just there as a guide to show that you're on the right path and we'll um, jump through some of the figures we've recorded in a, just a second on this video so hang fire one minute so here are some of the measurements we've recorded and i wanted to kind of illustrate how the maths give you an indication as to being on the right lines but they're not set in stone and using the example i have of such a small circuit can kind of illustrate more dramatically with the figures than you might have seen on a larger circuit where some of these uh, values are higher and uh, the negligible difference between the two um, less of a worry or concern. Not that it is a worry or concern, but it's just a better way to highlight what you might actually find out on site. And again, we've got a ZDV of 0 0.62 ohms and a PFC of 832 amps. Little R1 is 0 0.03, little RN 0 0.04, and little R2 0 0.06. And again, they're your end-to-end -end resistance values on your line, neutral and CPC. And the mass would dictate that if you use a multiplier of 1.67 against little r1 or little rn, you should come out close enough to the value of little r2. And in this case, we roughly did. So we would calculate that out at 0 0.05 to 0 0.07. And I'm rounding the figures up a little bit there. But, you know, that roughly pans out. And again, with a measurement of r1, r2. So this is um, your crossover connections, which you wish you would make it. Uh, the line and CPC, and then measure at each socket outlet on this particular circuit. Uh, we got 0 0.04 ohms. And if you were to calculate that out, we would expect to see 0 0.025 ohms. So there's a small difference there in that measurement. And there's a few reasons for that. I mean, some is just a variation on the, the test itself. I was actually using a different test lead. Although I, I zeroed off the lead, it was still different. So we had that one uh, as opposed to testing with the crock clips at the consumer unit. And again, we've got the resistance of the actual socket front itself. And although that should be neg negligible, you've got the switch plates. Um, there's all sorts of things that can affect that value. And that's a close enough measurement to not be worried. If you was concerned, you could measure off the back of the socket front, for example, here. So we could switch back to using the probe, pop the socket off and take a measurement off the actual wiring. Um, again, if you were getting something that was way out of the uh, expected parameters, you could do that just to see if there's an issue in the actual socket front itself or the wiring. So that's just the way that the maths would help you with that comparison to determine if you need to be looking a little bit further into things. And again, the ZS was measured at 0 0.63 ohms and calculated out with ZDB um, plus R1, R2, which is 0 0.62 plus 0 0.04, which gives 0 0.68. And again, you've got a small difference there. And that's, again, for a couple of reasons, similar to the first one, that you've got a different um, test lead under the live test than the dead one. And also that you've got um, parallel earth paths, not that there's any really in, in this particular example, um, but in a bigger install you would, you'd have your bonding conductors back in, in connected when you're measuring your ZS, as opposed to when you're doing your dead tests um, on the um, final circuit in question, so in this case R1, R2. Um, and again, the supply characteristics coming into the installation, they're not set in stone, they fluctuate from second to second actually, and you can get some variation because of that. 
and this is close enough not to be overly concerned. And again, on an EICR, if you're seeing all of the figures match up perfectly between the maths and what's been measured, and that's usually a sign that perhaps the um, testing process hasn't been as thorough as it should be. It's not a, a fine science, we're not in lab conditions, and that's certainly not the case out on site. But I hope that little run through that test process and looking at the maths behind it and how the measurements relate to each other has been of some interest. So thanks for watching, I hope that was sort of useful to somebody and the person who asked on Instagram for the video to be made has uh, become aware of it and enjoyed it. Uh, again, please like and subscribe to the channel, I really appreciate that. Thanks everyone for, for watching and for uh, all the nice comments and support with it all, I really appreciate it. If anyone else would like to see any content fired up, please let me know. I've got some more three-phase testing coming soon, um, and again, some more out-on-site work. So there's there's lots of everything on my channel. It's not uh, aimed at any particular type of content. We just kind of run with it and see what happens. There's more podcasts coming. I've got two of those recorded already, and some more guests coming up over the next, um, I think we've booked now for about eight weeks. So there's a lot to record, a lot to get out, and I'm committed to doing it. Um, I can't wait, actually. So let's, let's get on with it. Um, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.